So for the second video, I wanted to kind of show some of the things I've done with uh, some of the new stuff they've added with their DLC construction packs, the different uh, different things they've added, uh, the conduits, the power doors, the, some of the different uh, tile sets that they've used, construction sets that they've included, like the, the concrete, the warehouse, all those different things. And just kind of show some of what I've created. I mean, obviously, I'm not, you know, a super master at this. I'm just kind of filling around, making stuff, and saying, hey, this looks cool. Let's let's try this and see what happens here. So this is um, Taffington Boathouse, which is a very small settlement area. You don't have a whole lot of room. And it starts off with basically just this two-story house with a totally caved-in roof that's useless and this little tiny boathouse next to it. This is, again, one of the earlier places that I built stuff at, so my initial construction here was really, I mean, it was bad. It, it, was, it, was, it was basically those cheap wood walls that were just kind of circling around this thing in some sort of jagged, haphazard fashion with some of the half-board pieces trying to fill in the gaps and... It, it looked really, really, really bad. I mean, it, it, it was really ghetto. Um, I, I guess you could say that that made it kind of fit the ambiance because, yeah, it was very, you know, slapped together looking, but I didn't like it. It was, it was really bad. So I came back here and was doing some stuff with it and tried to make it a little, look a little bit more professional, I guess. I decided to use the concrete uh, construction set. So I used the concrete foundation blocks, the concrete walls, and just really kind of made it look really solid. I, I don't, again, don't want to say professional because I'm not, but it makes it look a lot neater, nicer looking, more thought out, like I actually cared about what I was doing. Um, I, I like this. It, it comes with the balconies, so <laughs> there really is no good place to put turrets. Like, there's supposed to be a turret mounting bracket that comes in one of the sets, but it totally does not connect to anything. It just kind of slides right through and doesn't have connecting points to anything. I've, I've not figured out how to make it attached to anything to be able to put turrets on. And it comes in Covenant. If you go to the Covenant site, uh, place, which is like right over the, the hill from here, they, they've got the little wooden brackets on their concrete walls with turrets attached to it, but for some reason they don't really work when I try and use it. Maybe it's something I'm doing, I don't know. So I just saw these uh, balconies and they just looked really perfect, so I was like, hey, we'll put the turrets in there. Whether these can actually shoot through the balcony, if that's solid or not, I don't know. Laser turret looks like it should be okay because it's over it. The machine gun turret, I don't know. Nobody's attacked yet since I finished this, so I don't know. But a couple things I wanted to show about this. this is not a, a big thing, not a super detailed build. I mean, obviously, I've done some things here, fiddled around with the concrete here, uh, building this extension onto the house and you putting this little me. wreck area on top. The house itself is pretty much, I haven't done much to it. It's pretty barren inside. I've got beds upstairs, but that's about it. But the main thing about this that I, I really liked when I did this was this the, these parapet walkways that I've got installed and I'm this isn't the first place I've done it but this was probably the the, the best designed version of it that you I've done taste the salt water because when you've here. got these walls and again I, as I said in the other vi other video when a settlement gets attacked the settlers they go charging out they go charging out to the gate and they come out here and they start shooting. And they don't use any of the cover or any of the protection. I mean, you build these nice big giant walls and you do all these things to help protect them and they ruin it by charging and leaving the protection of the walls. So what I've done is I've used another one of those logic gates, very similar to the one I have in the uh, Church of the Holy Living Tree, where this is hooked up to a siren and the uh, power generator so as long as the siren is off and the power generator is on this has got power running to it so it keeps the gate open everything's fine people can get in and out but if somebody were to turn the siren on that 
breaks the logic gate, power gets cut off, the gate goes down. Now nobody can get out and nobody can get in. So all these people are like, hey, 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 we need to go attack, we need to go attack. They can't get out, they can't go attack whoever is attacking them, whoever is invading. So then all these people, how, how can I use them? Well, I suppose they could all come Easier up to these on the guard the posts and shoot down, which would kind of work, but that's not the point. The point is you got these big, giant concrete walls. You should be able to use them as ways for settlers to come up and shoot. I mean, that would make sense, right? You got these big concrete walls. It's perfect defense. You use this as a fighting position. The problem is there's really no good setup to do this. Because you want this in a way that's that if you crouch, 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 oh yeah, there you go. If you crouch, you're low enough that you can't be shot through the wall. But if you stand up, you're high enough that you can look down. And so trying to get this height for these platforms, because there are no connecting points, there, there's no link points for you to take these floors and attach them, there's no snap points to snap to these concrete walls, you have to figure out how to lift them up that high and run them along the wall. And the way I found to do this was these wonderful little things here. These come from a mod that lets you build ramps, angled floor pieces, which I absolutely love that, that mod. I have used these things so many times in so many places because you get stuff like this where you've got these concrete foundation pieces that don't set all the way to the ground, which, you know, half the time you don't want them to anyways because you want them to lift it up a little bit. But then you've got doorways that, okay, well, if this is like a foot or two off the ground, how are people supposed to get in? Well, that's where these angled floor pieces come in, these little ramps. So I have used these so many times. It's crazy how useful these things are. I don't know why they're not included in the regular setup with all the regular construction tools, but these are brilliant. So to the guy who made these, you're awesome. You're my hero. So how do you do it? All right, let's go into construction mode, and I will show you. So I'll go to structures, wood, floors, and here's my angle. Now these, what you want to do, the right height that you want to get it is about two and a half of these. So you're going to take that, and these have a nice little, they actually have a midpoint snap. So you can snap them on the ends like that. So you can snap them on the top ends like that. Or you can snap them in the middle like this. So what I found was the best height was basically two and a half, two and a half of these. So you snap one here at a mid, then there. So you really have three of them, but one of them is at that midpoint, and then from there, oops, you just come straight out and boom. There's there's the height you need perfectly set and then you can just put these little fencing barricades on the backside. Now I know, you know, it would be a whole lot easier to just Oops, come on. Learn how to walk. It would be a whole lot easier to just come up here, use this top part here, put a floor along this and put all of this right here at this level, which would basically put you up this high. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a pretty simple and reasonable solution. The The problem that I have with that, that I don't like it, is in order for you to do that, A, it puts you up really, really high. It totally ruins the usefulness of all this thick concrete wall or metal wall or whatever type of wall you're using and, and you end up having to use more of these and so you, you end up with the that all of this look at how kind of you know I mean yeah it's post-apocalypse everything is ruined and trashy 
but it just looks trashy. If you constantly got, if all you have on all your walls is this, it just doesn't look good. One settlement, maybe two settlements, it's okay. But if you're going to do all your settlements with these walkways and all of them have this as the outside top edge, it just looks bad. So this way I can use the wall for what it's supposed to be, protection. Keep this on the inside so it doesn't look too bad and still have the effect of providing a somewhat accessible usable I can still get an angle I can't get the best angle down like I can't get that but I can still get a pretty good angle down at targets down below, below the wall which again going with my theme my personal taste of it fits if I was going to design a settlement, if I was going to build this place and I had these big concrete walls, this is what I would do. I would have these here and use the walls as protection. I wouldn't put people above it and say, hey, here's this big concrete wall, but instead I want you to hide behind these thin planks of wood with all those gaps. That's going to protect you, not this. But no, that's dumb. Use the concrete for what it's there for. Use the concrete to stop the bullets, the lasers, and the missiles and you can just use the wood on the inside to people keep people from falling off so that's the first thing was just the that those catwalks that i built in there and and kind of the the logic gate with this door which is really cool once i figured out how to do those it's just really fun messing with those the other thing if i can remember where was oh yes one of the places i almost never go starlight drive-in this is again one of the places that I never actually developed. Um, I did put a few things down mostly because it's, it's where I send all my companions when I don't need them anymore so I can find them easy. Because if I just say, hey, you go to this place and hey, you go to the other place, I'm going to forget where they're at. I have a bad memory. So I just like, okay, here's a spot. Put them all there. That way if I need somebody. Oh, slog suffered attack. Okay. Um, I've noticed that those attacks have a much shorter timer than they used to have. You don't have, I mean, you used to be able to, like, spend some time wandering around, just ignoring it for a while. Now it's like, as soon as that message comes up, you've got to go. There was also supposed to be, I heard, or thought I heard, um, something in a patch or DLC where, uh, your, your settlements were supposed to be able to actually defend themselves. So you didn't have to always rush to, res to the rescue. I mean, I mean, we just saw, like, look at what I just had there at, at Taffington Boathouse with the walls, the turrets, and everything like that, and people with armor and guns. Please. What's the point in going to all that trouble if they can't do anything unless you're there? If every time you're not there, they can't defend themselves? That's just kind of silly. But anyway, so here's the drive-in. Cleared out a lot of junk, but not everything. Um, Again, this is where hey, what we discussed earlier. all my companions go I that I don't need them anymore. It's like, hey, okay, you, you fine. Right Hang out here until I need you. So with the new uh, expansion pack, the contraption stuff, they had those machines where you can make stuff. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll see what they can do. So I figured, come out here, you know, put a few of them down. Stop talking to me. Put a few of them down, set them up, see what kind of stuff you can make with them, what kind of options they have for construction, what kind of armor, ammo, guns, whatever it is. Maybe constantly trying to kill us, but so that was my original intention. So I started out just you know put down some flooring, so a nice level area to work. I mean it's a pretty level area, but I'm kind of an obsessive neat freak. I gotta have things all nice and perfect, right angles, dress right dress and all that stuff. So laid down the uh, the flooring, the foundations, put in the power, and yeah, it takes a lot of power. Look at this. These are generators that generate I'm I'm using hundred and eight power. Thirty five, thirty three fusion generators, each generating thirty five units of power for this one factory. Well I mean I've got most I don't even have all of these forges in here. I've got 
about eight of them, and I think there's like nine. I think there was like one that I didn't put in because I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, it was eight. no, it was two of them. What about explosives? I think, and then the one on uh, where is it? Where is it? Where did they put those? Where did they put those? I totally forgot where they put those. Oh, it's probably in power. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did not do energy weapon, energy weapon, ammunition, and explosives, and the pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics because it's just about fireworks, and I don't care about that. Explosives, I actually can't because I never got the explosives, chemistry stuff. I, I don't make grenades and stuff. Yeah, I never got the demolition expert perk, so I can't actually make that one. So, just laid it everything out, was running wires, connecting everything, trying to figure out. And originally, I had like every single one of these had their own terminal because I didn't know how the whole thing worked. And I want, I thought maybe like each one of these has to have its own terminal to program it and run it. And that actually did not work because <laughs> I tried starting up one terminal and there were so many things connected to it that it actually locked up and would not run anything. So, uh, cleared it all out put one terminal in and yeah it, that one terminal can pretty much run everything um, so looked at these said okay yeah there's nothing really special it's all basic vanilla Fallout 4 like from the very original first part of the game like the ammo is your basic ammo for I don't even think there's any of the 50 45 70 ammo I don't know if it make any of that um, heavy weapons it does do gauss rifles so that's pretty cool those are really nice powerful guns so you can make those and put those on your guards and settlements and that tears stuff up pretty good. Food, uh, it, it, to me this is kind of pointless. I mean, it's like, I, I get food anyways from my farms and food doesn't spoil or go bad, so why do I need to make canned food? Energy weapons, again, your basic stuff, nothing really spectacular here. It does make plasma guns, so you can turn those into nice plasma rifles, sniper rifles, things like that clothing, exactly what it says. It's like your suits, your dresses, your shirts, your pants, all the stuff that nobody wears unless they're playing dress up. Uh, guns, basic guns, nothing really special, all the same stuff. It doesn't have any of the Far Harbor DLC guns in it. Uh, I think it, the combat rifle and assault rifle are the, the highest it goes. Armor, highest this goes is the combat armor. Again, which is pretty much your basic original Fallout 4 level stuff. And loot. This is just all the random stuff that you pick up when you're exploring and you just collect it. It's the junk that you dump into your supplies to, to salvage and get stuff out of. Um, yeah, these don't actually come with those names. Like loot and armor and guns and so on. I, I actually put those on there so I knew which one of these machines <laughs> did what. Yeah, so the uh, the stencil add-on for, uh, I forget where it's in, in decorations. There's a section for stencils, and so I just put those on there so I know what each of these setups does. So, yeah, so I originally just did this, put the things here, tested them out, saw, okay, this is what they make, nothing special, nothing big. And I thought, well, since I'm here... Might as well, you know, see what I can do with this warehouse construction set because they added a couple constructions. One was warehouses, one was barns or something like that. So I thought, all right, well, I've got factory things in here with generators and machines. Might as well make a factory warehouse sort of thing. So it obviously put up the walls. Really had fun putting up the ceiling. Like you can say, I like the the clear glass stuff so you can look out and see stuff. I don't like, like, if you go over here with these ones where everything is all covered in and it's all dark and gloomy and shadowy and there's no windows. Nah. Not my thing. I, I like the windows. I like having, you know, uh, I can see stars. I see stars. So this was kind of fun, making the, the ceiling. Uh, as you can see, I made it really, really high. There's these extra row of half panels here that I didn't need to put in, but I didn't realize it. Um, but I, I just put them up there and 
before I even looked at what was available for the roof. So I put these up here, and then I went to the roofing section and saw, oh, hey, look, I've got these angled ones, so I can angle things up even higher. Cool. Now it looks really factory warehousey with, you know, the big, giant, super high ceiling. Um, funky little corner panels here that, nice, you know, they, they, you can get that angle. You've got that crease there where it meets both angles there from this side and this side. What was kind of frustrating, though, was over here, this wing. I originally made this wing to be as high with the same type of vaulted roof as this one. The problem is there are no angle pieces that can meet th that, that intersection. Like this one here, it's great for these two corners, this side and this side. But there's no intersection that goes this way from this side to this side. And so that was really a pain in the butt trying to figure that out. So I eventually just said, okay, well, we'll just drop the ceiling down and figure something out. And it worked out pretty good. Kind of like, and especially these like little triangle pieces that fit in there. That was really nice that they put those in there because otherwise that would have looked really ugly and stupid with those gaps there and I, had to <laughs> I would have had to figure something out but it, it actually looks not bad I'm kind of proud of myself for it this is also where I experimented with the uh, the conduit piping because I had seen it there and it, it's I looked at it while I was doing other constructing stuff and I was like conduit what's this conduit stuff what does it work how does it there were no instructions on it and so I was just kind of like I, I was kind of hesitant to mess with it because I didn't want to screw something up with one of my other settlements, something important. So I figured, eh, this doesn't matter. This isn't important. So I'll try the whole conduit thing and see how it works. So, yeah, this is where I learned all the tricks about what goes where, how these things connect, and all those different things where the pass-through, like here's a pass-through here, and all of this, what well, think it's kind of clever. I mean, not compared to somebody, I know some people have got like really massively complicated contraptions, but for me, I thought this was clever. All of this is controlled right now. Lights off, nothing's running. This one little switch, boom. The entire place turns on. And now, terminal's active. All the machines are running. They're not making anything because I don't have any supplies in them so there's no supplies in them for them to use to make stuff but that's fine the lights are running yeah it's just kind of fun trying to figure out all this stuff the 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 conduit thing like i said it's it's cool but it's also very limiting because you're limited to what these shapes can do for instance this pass through you can see the little conduit point over here comes in and this comes and makes these angles this way. It would be really nice if there was a way for instead of this to come and point straight out like this, if it would come down and, oh, I don't know, point to the side so it runs along the wall. That would be really helpful because otherwise you have to do stuff like this where it comes up, goes out into the room, and then you have to make it curve this way in order to get it to change directions. Another thing that would have been useful is, uh, where's an example? Oh, here's an example. Now, you can make the conduit go from floor to ceiling because you've got these pieces that will change the height. The problem is they also change direction. Like, here you've got the conduit going this way, and now we're going to change height to go higher. <gasps> but then we have to turn and go back the way we came. What? Why don't we have one? that comes in this way, goes up, and then keeps going that same direction. That would be really helpful, but no. At least not now. Maybe later in some future DLC or somebody will mod it in, I don't know. But it's not there now, so it makes things really kind of awkward. you got to do a lot of twisting, turning, and arranging things and figuring out patterns. One of the other awkward things about this, because these are so rigid, uh, it, it is very difficult sometimes. Here, not so much because i got a big open space. But in really tight places, like in that bunker entrance to the uh, Church of the Living Tree, 
if you haven't seen that video, go look at it. The bunker entrance is a really small area, so it's really tight trying to arrange this conduit to get it to go where it needs to go. Because you can't change this shape. You can use like shorter length bars, and you've got different size curves. Uh, these are a big curve, like here's a really short curve here. Here's a larger curve here, and there's an even bigger version of a curve. I don't think I have any in this one, though. But um, if you don't get things lined up just right, because these are rigidly straight, they could actually end up going out. I mean, you see how crooked that is? See that angle? If this is a really tight area, and I wanted to try and run this along the wall, that would not work because that might actually be going through the wall to the outside or might be moving away from the wall depending on how you had it so getting things lined up just right so that everything runs nice and neatly along walls and along through corners and things like that really 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 tedious and it's a lot of trial and error of starting it running out links to see do they line up right is everything in work and if it doesn't you have to tear it all down readjust it a little tiny bit start all over again and that gets kind of tedious but, and yeah this is kind of like my little test of the pass through because it's the first time I used one of those so I was like well does it work I don't know how, how, how I so I hook this up and I decided well here's something that I can use it as long as this is lit I know the power is running through that and everything is working just kind of like my little test light thing and yeah so those are some of the things I've been doing some of the fun I've been having just trying out different stuff nothing terribly creative nothing you know super amazing no big week long construction projects just lots of and I have no idea why those lights are still on the power is off but they still show as being lit even though there's no actual light <laughs> they just look like they're lit. That's kind of weird. Anyway, so, yep, yeah, that's just a couple of things I want to show you in addition to the other video I had about the uh, Church of the Holy Living Tree, which I, I thought was pretty pretty fun build, pretty neat little story. It's kind of the sort of thing that, you know, you, you can almost see with that Church of the Holy Living Tree an actual story going on there. That there was, there was a plot. There was, you know, some sort of character thing. There was... There, there was a story behind it, why it was there. This, there's no story. I was just messing around playing with stuff. But it still ended up looking pretty cool. I think Bethesda should hire me. Because I'm good like that. Alright, so there you go. Me at my creative best. Have a good one.